Are we ready? Yes. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Kimberly Crowell, the customer service manager, will do the presentations. All right, Ms. Crowell. Good afternoon, commissioners. Good afternoon. My name is Kim Crowell. I'm the customer service manager. Um, thank you, first of all, for giving us this opportunity to honor two of our SMEs, as we call them, our subject matter experts here in our customer service call center. Um, and we would like to honor them for the Neptune Award. And I'm going to ask at this time for Nicole Baker and Teresa White to please stand. He's provided excellent assistance to our new hires um, that we, we held a new hire class and they provided um, assistance and valid resources to our new hires to assist them along the way with their new journey here with the Detroit Water and Sewage Department. And since that was such a big success, we've also have identified uh, a few more subject matter experts, and we're going to be using them moving forward in our training um, that we're going to that we're putting together because we're going to have a new training class starting sometime in January. So I would just like to give them their Neptune Awards and just thank them for a job well done. Could you mention their names again, please? Yes, Nicole Baker. And Teresa White. All right. And what Mr. about the, okay, I'm Mr. Sorry. Director? Did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. Just how proud I am of uh, you know all of our employees this time of year, but especially the ones that have uh, gone above yes. uh, the call of duty, so to speak, in order to help train uh, incoming personnel. I mean, there's nothing more powerful than understanding uh, with with regards to this job what what has to be done, how often it gets done and how important it is that it gets done. I mean, we, we expect, we, we do a lot of training, but those three things, subject matter experts can relay that information. What, what's, what needs to be done? How often do you have to do it? And, and then again, how important is it that it get done? And as, as this board knows, we've had uh, not a lot of success in um, retaining new Hirees in that in that position, and so I know that uh, Kim is thinking about bringing all new hires uh, before they even um, when they fill out the application before they're hired to bring them in and sit them down for forty five minutes and let them actually see the work that gets done. Let them talk to the subject matter experts so they know exactly what the job entails. So they're they're going to pay dividends when when our retention rate starts to improve uh, because it's very costly to keep training uh, new people and have them leave simply because they didn't quite understand what the job was. Fails. And so the subject matter experts are going to be vital in helping them understand that before uh, we deliver equipment to their homes and invest training and, and, and things of that That's nature. Yeah, so thank you very much. Commissioner Blackman. Um, Director Brown. I would like for us, we have a publication that comes out periodically. It would be very nice if we would take pictures of the honorees so that they could be put into that publication for all of our employees and, and those who read that publication yep. to see. So I've asked, um, I think, uh, well, well, Branch to, to just take, have them have them stand or whatever and, and so we could take a picture of them. I, I think we have like six more and then maybe we, we, do, we do it all You want to do it all, all at the same time? time? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. we'll, we'll separate the customer service reps from the S1 yes. license, but okay. we'll, we'll do it all at one time. Good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Crowell. Thank, thank you. you. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Sam Smalley, Chief Operating Officer. Good afternoon, Sam. Sam. Carrying the message of what we just discussed about training and advancement and uh, teaching our employees. I'd like to congratulate the following employees and ask them to please stand and be recognized for passing the latest round of S license testing offered by the state of Michigan. Mason Atabi passed his S4 license. Soconi Howard passed 
the S4 license, Mashera Hayes Parks, S3, John Lilly, S4, Marwan Salahuddin, S4, and Leon Wright, S4. Are you with us? These six individuals passed a test administered by the state of Michigan, uh, Eagle, uh, Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. The test has a wide range of subjects, including mathematics, flow, chlorination, safety, lead and copper, et cetera, et cetera. Sampling, um, it's a difficult test. They studied for months and months, and they are to be congratulated. Overall, DWSD has 38 licensed operators, including the six names that I just read. Congratulations. I would, I would argue that we probably, behind Great Lakes Water Authority, are the most certified uh, organization in the state of Michigan. So congratulations to them. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair, I think also we congratulated our uh, Sam Smalley and other members of his team. Um, I, I want to say David Ridgeway. I, I don't want to leave anybody out, but uh, there's a lot of tutoring that, that goes on and to not have to bring in-house um, instructors from the outside where you can do it within is, is quite an accomplishment. And so uh, I, I do want to congratulate all 38, especially the six newly uh, licensed uh, employees. It, it, when, when I can go uh, to these trade organizations and, and I'm, I'm happy to say we're, we're probably the most certified uh, utility in Michigan anyway, if not one of the top in the country, um, it, it's something to be proud of. And without them taking the, taking the sacrifice and the time, I, I, I remember the days and I, I certainly wouldn't have to take a test with that kind of math on it today, uh, but I do remember the amount of hours that it takes uh, away from family time and, and other things in order to improve your skill level. And hopefully uh, there will be upward mobility in the organization for those that take the time to improve skills. So thank you to all 38. Thank you to Sam and his team for putting on the classes and, and really pushing this. Because if you don't get people to get behind something like this, it kind of falls off the, off the radar. So uh, we, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the whole organization and the way that we're moving the skill level of it forward. So, and it wouldn't be possible without uh, those men and women sitting out in the audience that took the time to do it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So you you you, uh, you took, you stole the words out of my mouth because I know that Sam and his team have been very instrumental yeah. in the training uh, for all of these employees. Is this now the time to take the picture? Yeah, we, we got it, we got a camera. Let me, let me can I just, I, you know, Palencia Mobley, she uh, was very yes, instrumental in, in this program for a, a long time, if not one of the originators. So I, I, I don't want to leave her, leave her out. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the things that um, I always uh, admire and observe about people who uh, have an educational accomplishment that this represents is that is something nobody can ever take away from you you know a degree a certification um it 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 uh is uh it's an accomplishment um but it's also uniquely yours so congratulations yeah. yep now uh, oh it's time to take a picture can we yes. take a brief recess to do that all right let's recess All right, the next item, let's, uh, let me call us back to order. And the next item, item six, is the approval of the minutes for November the 16th, 2022. Commissioners? Move approval, Mr. Chair. It's been moved and seconded. Question, uh, any corrections or additions to the minutes as presented? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, and the minutes are approved. Uh, next, we will move into um, public comment and who will be making the uh, announcement and the instructions for public comment. Mr. Chair, I have the instructions. All right. 
to make a comment, if you are in person, please sign the sign-in sheet. Your name will be called and you can proceed to the microphone. If you are online, please raise your hand by using the raise hand icon on your desktop or mobile device. If you are calling into the meeting, press star nine to raise your hand. If you are online or on the phone after your name is called, IT will give permission to unmute. In order to begin speaking, you will have to unmute yourself. To do so, press the unmute button, which is the microphone icon if you're online, or star six if you're calling in. As a reminder, you will have a limit of three minutes to make your comment. There will be a timer indicating your remaining time. If you're online and make a comment, we do kindly request that you fill out the comment card link that's located in the chat. By filling out the card, we will have your contact information to follow up appropriately. If you are unable to click the link, please let us know and a telephone number will be provided for you to call to provide your information. You will only be called upon once. Once the chair closes public comment, there will be no other comments from the public and all attendees will remain muted for the duration of the meeting. On-site comments will go first, followed by online and on the phone. Thank you for your attention. All right, thank you very much. May I first call upon Ms. Bueller, Bueller Walker? Ms. Walker? Good afternoon, Ms. Walker. Good afternoon. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you for the opportunity. Hey, Mr. Director, welcome back. Thank you. I got three things, um, Board of Water Commissioners. Um, do we know when water shutoffs are going to begin for 2023? Um, two more, two more, I'm in a way. Two more things. Um, we would like a little bit more push in advertising for the wonderful Lifeline plan. I think it's very it's a good opportunity for the city trade residents. And I, we have been talking to Wayne Metro on the phone every day. They've been very, very open. Um, I was told they're going to be working through the holidays. And so we'll hire Detroit. So we'll be working and sending people over. But I have one um, concern that some people saying that they apply for the Lifeline plan and they send them over to DHS. And I was wondering what that was all about. And thank you for listening. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, if I could just... With regards to the water shutoffs, um, I, I just want everybody to be clear that every account holder, every resident in the city of Detroit has the opportunity to enjoy the benefits of the moratorium if they simply ask for assistance. That, that's all you have to do. Uh, if you're income eligible, we'll put you in the lifeline plan and you will stay in the moratorium. If you're not at, uh, income eligible, we will put you in a 1030 payment plan that meets your needs, and you will also enjoy the benefits of the moratorium. So every customer has that opportunity. We are currently going door to door to 1,300 homes a day uh, with tablets and registering uh, folks for the Lifeline plan uh, all the way up till New Year's Eve. I committed to getting to 49,000 homes. And then in order to get there, uh, we have to work on Christmas Eve in order to get uh, that number of homes uh, attended to. I'm quite confident that we'll be very close to 10,000 um, customers in the plan by the first of the year. That's a phenomenal number. Uh, we've done an, uh, an outstanding job of getting. Uh, my goal is 20,000. Um, if if that if it's that much need there, so um, I'm not trying to focus on shutoffs. I'm trying to focus on getting people registered uh, into one of the two plans, which will ensure that they are on no shutoff list and will continue to be in the moratorium. Currently, we have 16,000 customers that are in that category right now. 16,000 that are either in the Lifeline plan or the 103050, and they will stay 
uh, off of any shutoff list and enjoy the benefits of the moratorium. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank yes, Ms. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Walker. Uh, next, may I call on Mike Shane? Mr. Shane. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to thank, first of all, Ward for replacing my uh, lead line and my son's lead line. It was done last week. Um, it's, it's a relief to know that I've got uh, lead free water, I think, coming into my house. We'll see if any lead got trapped by the water meter. But I'm uh, here today to advocate for Jermaine Payne. Uh, you, you're quite familiar with his situation. He bought a land bank house and has no water connected to it. It makes it very difficult for him to maintain or to improve the house. You need water to mix the drywall mud. You need water to wash the paintbrushes. You need water to do all kinds of things. Um, he had the sewer line scoped out, which was completely unnecessary, but he did it anyway. He spent almost $450 on that, even though technicians from the water department did a blue dye test and verified that the sewer line was clear. Nevertheless, he had to pay $450 for this. Uh, the, I spoke to uh, Mr. Brown a couple times in the last few weeks to let him know that the sewer line was clear. And initially I thought we were gonna get the land bank to release $10,000 to connect his water line. The land bank says he's not eligible because they told him that he did not have water connected. I made these posters for you to see. This is a, a land bank website. If you read carefully, it says, water line cut, no. This is from the land bank website this week. How can they go and tell him that he knew that his water line cut was cut when the website itself says the water line is intact? He's also been given a, a, a thing called a water addendum to the purchase agreement right here, which implicit in this, is uh, that the water line is connected. He's done all the things on here, except get the water turned on. He has an account in his name. He's paying the drainage fees, the much hated drainage fees on that property. He's in a catch 22. The DWSD says uh, he's, not a, uh, he's not on the deed. Well, you know how the land bank works. You gotta get the water connected before they completely release you and give the deed 100% in your name. So what is he gonna do? The land bank is lying. I hate to say that, but they're lying. Mr. It says right here, the property has water. Mr. Shane, yes. the land bank has a board of directors that have public meetings. Aren't you talking to the wrong folks? No, because you guys gave the land bank a million dollars to uh, connect people's water lines who those are the people who bought land bank houses and were not told that the water line was cut. We want some of that money. Mr. Brown told me a couple of weeks ago in a phone call that he was calling the land bank to release the money. Now they won't release it. We will be going to the land bank as well. But the million dollars that you allocated for many of the residents or purchases of land bank houses, uh, you know, to rectify their situation, I feel that Mr. Payne is qualified and entitled to that money. That's why we're coming here today. We will go to the land bank itself as well, and we will write to everybody we can. I'll even, maybe even contact a special uh, inspector general for the TARP funds, which is investigating the land bank. But we want, you've got, just tell the land bank to release $10,000 so this water line can be connected. That's what I ask, please. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Uh, Mr. D'Amico Williams. Hi, good evening. Uh, I'm sorry, good afternoon, commissioners. How are you guys? Good Happy afternoon. holidays to Williams. all of you. Uh, I have three Christmas wishes. Uh, my first wish is for water affordability at a price we all could pay. 
And my second wish is for you guys to move back into the community uh, to have your meetings. We do miss you in the communities. Uh, uh, different to have in different places like recreation centers versus churches and uh, closed centers. And my third wish also is to uh, stress that this waterline issue of Mr. Payne gets resolved. You all have dropped the ball since April. And even if you so-called had the land bank here, there has not been a grand meeting to uh, discuss with residents in regards to uh, waterline issues with the land bank. I, I, I very much against the land bank. I want them abolished. There are plans, but anyway, it's just time for us to deal with that issue. Um, I want to talk in regards to the water shutoff moratorium uh, through conversations and different uh, uh, correspondences. We published a letter this morning uh, sent to you guys in receipt uh, that we are partnering uh, through the Christmas and New Year's holiday to enroll and register as many people as we can. We were just on last Friday uh, on a radio show. We got 30 calls with people wanting more information, but the information isn't widely circulating. I like this uh, uh, ad uh, in regards to how to read your bill and such of that nature. That should be published. We also need the traditional media. I understand the door-to-door -door works, but also in COVID-19, uh, we have requested an extension of this moratorium until we're able to have a full rollout of the program, until we're able, because you see COVID-19, RSV, the flu, uh, the public health and safety of the city of Detroit. We're also uh, in lobby with the mayor, the city council, the new Democratic leadership that's getting ready to be inaugurated next month. Let's hold off on this uh, uh, shutoffs until we're able to find a solution for more money until we're able to reach more people, even those that are the 16 to 60,000 that still are having trouble and difficulty. That could be from uh, leaks to uh, last winter's problems to floods. We have to break that down, all, all of it in detail. And then let's go after, because the treasurer's having problems, the city council has threatened to go door to door. None of that has happened. So we have to have a general culmination so that we can offer people help and resources. I do thank this uh, committee, the board for working with Hydrate Detroit throughout the year. Water Amnesty is working. I'm pleased to hear $2.5 million have been forgiven. Thank you so much because that is a big present of a Merry Christmas to residents in the city of Detroit. Thank you. Mr. Chair, yeah, yes, that, that number is really $7 million has been, has been forgiven. And, and let me just say this to residents in the city of Detroit listening, all it takes is a phone call. The activist community and such, we have done so much over 2014. This is a different administration, a different ball game. It is time for us to get in the game and to enroll. Now for all the other uh, ambiguities, the lawsuits and legal challenges, the streets do not respect the law. We respect clean water at a price we all can pay, but also have the opportunity for the working poor, the middle class, and all residents of Detroit to be included in this development. It's a very important thing for residents to call 267-8000. Call Hydrate Detroit if you're having problems getting through. 313-279-0608. Email us. Walk Order, the number four, Detroit at gmail.com. And please donate to the fundraiser. Thank you to uh, Commissioner Kenlock for donating, Eisenhower for supporting, and we would like for everyone to support the Hydrate Detroit fundraiser so that we can get more people involved in the uh, Lifeline plan. Thank you so much. Mr. Chair. All right. Yes, Commissioner Kinlock. You know, I want to say you, all of us are familiar with the stresses and the tension that the um, this whole water rate and affordability on discussion has been in the city of Detroit. Um, but I absolutely, as much as we've had some tough discussions um, in regards to this, I absolutely want to uh, say that Hydrate Detroit, as I've said in the past, has shown itself to be the type of relationship, working relationship, that all um, activist community can take a look at um, and seeing how you can fight hard but you can also fight towards trying to get results on behalf of the people who we say we want to represent. And so hats off and kudos to all that have been involved in, and specifically to the leadership at Hydrate Detroit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I, I mentioned to Mr. Williams in a separate conversation that Hydrate Detroit has become a de facto extension of our customer service department. <laughs> and I want you to know how much we appreciate that. Uh, all right. Uh, Dion Dunbar. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ms. Dunbar. I have been a lifelong resident of the city of Detroit, but like in the last year and a half, since I purchased my home, I have wanted to move out of Detroit. I have had conversations with multiple people, starting from trying to get water services at my home. The, the technician came out and looked up and said, oh, I disconnected all of these vacant houses in this area when I called the water, but before I purchased the home, I called the water company and asked, was it any problem? They said it wasn't any problem. So we went to getting the technician to come out to put a meter in and turn the water on. Well, come to find out the water line had been cut by the water department. And I was told that I needed to pay $4,000, at least $4,000 to have my water line replaced. I have had my water line replaced. I've had my sewage line replaced. And I still do not have any water. And I have a $755 water bill and no water. I have talked to everybody from BC, DSW, everywhere. I have talked to everywhere. And I am now at the point where they are telling me that I need another $4,500 to bust up the street in order to have my water line connected. At what point do the city of Detroit, I mean, do the water company take over and start doing the things that they need to do? Because I don't see how I'm required to have the street busted up in order to have this water line replaced. Mr. Chair? Yes. Can I just ask how you purchased the home? I purchased the home from a private seller. It is not a land bank house. It has never been a land bank house. And every time I talk to somebody, that's the first thing they ask me. And then they say, well, they should have told you. How was they going to tell me if there's no record at the water company that, is, that has been cut? And why is it that it's all up to me to pay for this to be replaced? I have talked to people from the city council's office. I've tried talking to people in the mayor's office. I've tried finding funding for this problem, and I still cannot find any funding. I have a son and a disabled brother that I'm taking care of with no water for a year and a half. Oh, Mr. Director, did she say that, the, I guess at some point this was a private transaction, but someone had, at the EWCD told them that there was no um, water issues with regard to this property? Before I purchased the home. That's what she said, yes. I, I mean, we need, we need to get the address yeah. and we need to pull the records and- Yeah, we'll look into it. And get back with her uh, hopefully by tomorrow. Mr. Chair, is the, the name, address, and phone number on that sheet uh, there? Yes, we're, we're talking about 145. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're talking about Robinson Street? Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll get that to you. Okay. Thank you. All right, next, may we hear from Jacqueline Pippen? Good afternoon, Ms. Pippen. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? I'm calling on, like everyone else, I have three concerns. My first concern is the drainage charge. I'm trying to figure out how, these are my bills that I pay for the water department, a lot of bills. How is the drainage more than the water bill? It is good, and you can't calculate it up. You try to calculate up, but you call, you can't get anyone to help you to understand and my, that brings me to my second one. When are we going to open back up so we can go face to face to speak with someone? Because you cannot conduct business via phone. You cannot do it from my business to any other business. You have to be open in order for people to conduct business. And lastly, being a senior, nothing is senior friendly. There is no way any of the seniors are able to do what they need to do to conduct business for the water department. 
because most of your seniors do not know how to operate a computer. That's, that's, that's really not true. That's well, just not true. The only thing I can say is the majority not of your true. seniors. It's flat out not true. We deal with seniors every day okay. on the computer, and a lot of them are very literate. Is there a Wi-Fi issue in the city? Yes. Do some have trouble? But it's just flat out not true that seniors aren't able to take care of businesses okay, so on their computer. Are we going to be able to? And, I, and I'm, I'm going to assure you that before you leave today, as soon as you walk away from that microphone, yes, someone's going to, a person is going to sit down with you, explain to you how the drainage charge is calculated and work through any issue that you may have on any account. Before you leave today, we're going we're to take well, it. Well, the lady downstairs, Mr. Sloan, is working with me on that. But what are we going to do about face-to-face -face back in operation? You're going to have a face-to-face -face meeting today, and we're going to make 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 arrangements. I, at this point, um, we're, we'll take a look at uh, sometime next year whether or not those offices will be open or we will open up a office. But quite frankly, we just don't have a demand, uh, a large demand for it. And so we've talked about opening up an office uh, for appointments in this building, that might be a possibility next year, but we've leased our west side and our east side offices uh, to Wayne Metro because they're seeing as many of our customers on issues as we are. And so there just hasn't been a huge need. Uh, I'm glad you, you're bringing it to our attention that you need it and others may be in the same situation. We will take a look at it the first of the year on whether or not we need to have office hours for seniors or people like you that need to see someone face-to-face. -face. Thank you. Um, next, uh, can we hear from Heider uh, Alsbord? And pronounce, uh, I apologize for mispronouncing the name. The highlight of it, it's a property that's got a $28,000 water bill. And, you know, we don't feel it's justified. And not to waste your time, but in essence, the um, the bill occurred over, uh, over a certain time period. I've got it all in writing. And it was primarily estimated billings. And they were in the range of, say, like 54,000 to 59,000 gallons. When we finally when we finally got a meter put in, the meter read 1,496 gallons. So maybe the bill is double or triple what it should be. We've got a pretty well-written letter and with some documents, and you have your yeah, finance you, department. You know, no, no, well, I know. That, you'll get, they'll have to get specific. Anyway, your finance department denied it on August the 25th uh, of 22, and we're just asking one more time, can it be looked at? It's pretty comprehensive in writing what we think happened. Yeah, if you could leave the letter, we'll, you'll get a call tomorrow. We'll set up a date, and we'll, we'll bring you in. You can come with him, and uh, we'll sit down and go through it. Well, uh, very good, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, have a nice they, confirmation number for this. they don't need a confirmation. Call. He's going to have someone pick the letter up. I have. Is that and correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That thing, I, I bought a house from one county. Okay. And uh, as I know, you dropped the water bill when you bought a house, but you didn't. We have that in writing too, it's a specific property. And he said, once it was purchased, the water bill should be zero because he bought it through the option, the Wayne County option. So we can leave that document as well. Yeah, we, we can have that discussion. Okay, very yeah. good, thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Council Norell Hemphill, Councilor. Good afternoon, commissioners. How are y'all doing today? Good. I just wanted to first, um, well, let me state my name. My name is Norel Hemphill. I am an Equal Justice Works Fellow with Great Lakes Environmental Law Center and an attorney. I've had the pleasure of working with We the People of Detroit um, for the entirety of the Lifeline program. And I want to thank the board and DWSD for 
instituting the program. But I think that it's critical, again, that at this juncture, we always admit that this program is an assistance program and is not a true affordability program. And again, the difference between assistance and affordability is the sustainability of the program. While this is a great program and it will give relief to the residents who need it now, we do need a long-term affordability plan that does create a true sustainable process for Detroiters to have access to clean, safe, and affordable water. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't state my opinion that there should be a moratorium on water shutoffs. Um, if for no other reason, um, it seems like the infrastructure for DWSD to actually go through the collection process is not there. I was looking at the agenda today and I saw that there is an item on the agenda that talks about extending the contract to, um, excuse me, for the collection process. So while Detroiters are, are trying to figure out their way and still navigating flu, COVID and other things that we know that when a person is shut off, that everyone in that neighborhood, especially on that block, is 1.5 times more likely to contract a waterborne illness because of the public health impacts, because water should be realized as a human right. I think that this moratorium should be extended uh, while we figure this all of this out. Now, I do want to say that the Lifeline Plan will give, will give some um, a break for those residents who need it, who need that help now, that the Lifeline Plan will remove all arrears, 100% of arrears. And um, as you guys have told us, um, it will also provide a moratorium for those who apply at the time that they apply, and then those who are indeed fully enrolled in the program, they will be saved from water shutoffs. So thank you for that. Thank you also for agreeing to um, put together a, um, excuse me, on your website, the reporting of the Lifeline Plan so that residents of Detroit will be able to see in real time the progress of the plan. So we appreciate that. And also the Ombudsman, thank you so much for agreeing to work um, cohesively with the ombudsman's office so that if residents are having an issue that's not able to get resolved at Wayne Metro DWSD, that then they would be able to go to the ombudsman to try to get a resolution to any issues that they might have. Um, I think that was um, just about all that I had to say today. Again, thank you so much um, for working with residents um, and community to ensure that um, more Detroiters have access to clean, safe, and affordable water. Thank you and have a wonderful Mr. day. Chair, yes, I, I, I just want to thank we the people for you know working with us. There hasn't been a day this week uh, or even through the rest of this week that we haven't met with uh, water advocates. I know we had a long meeting with Wayne Metro and mm -hmm. uh, not Wayne Metro with uh, we the people of Detroit along with the ombudsman yesterday. Uh, I know that D'Amico was on the phone with some of my staff uh, when I walked into an office uh, earlier today. So we're 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 happy to have this relationship. Recently, uh, I heard we the people uh, of Detroit uh, on a radio program, and I was told after that radio program ended that a thousand callers called into Wayne Metro to apply for the program. So truly, working together is, is having the results. There, there, there's two points that that I want to make because. Um, you, you may not remember, or you, you may have heard that Roger Colton from Philadelphia and Joanne Watson's put a program together uh, that was a what was described as a real affordability program. And uh, the program that DWSD had in place was considered an assistance program that was not adequate. And I, I agree with that. I, I agree with that. But I, I think we, we may be losing sight of the fact that the Lifeline Plan is based on 1.8% of a household's income. And so we are taking into consideration the income of the household and charging 1.8% because the academic studies that we read said that 1.8%, if I charge more than that for water, 
is a burden on a family. And we agree with that. While other utilities, uh, they use 2%, 3%, or 4%, we use 1.8% of a household income. So I, I keep hearing that this, this, this is, it, it, I think that I've put together a, an affordability plan, but now the issue is it's not sustainable, that the, the funding is not there permanently. And I agree with that. And, and I'm so happy that we, the people of Detroit, is going, is, is going to join us in trying to find permanent funding. Second point, prior to the moratorium, we had a collection rate of 92% of what we build, we collected, 92%. Today, from the moratorium till today, it's down to 72%. When we end the moratorium at the end of this month, we would have lost $87 million that we have to pass on in future debt or not hire people or not do projects that make the system safe. Or raise and, rates. Or raise rates, which is, is untenable for our, our population. So I, you know, I just, I'm, I'm looking for, we have a program for low income customers that can't afford to pay. And the moratorium is not directed towards them, it's directing towards the people that can pay but are not paying. And so that's, that's the dilemma we're in. We're trying to collect from people that live in my neighborhood, quite frankly, that can afford to pay but are not paying because of the consequence. So to have a moratorium that's just broad, that fits everybody, whether you can pay or not, and the way we're trying to address that is to say, if you're low income, we have a program for you. You will, you can stay in the moratorium if you sign up for the program, but we have, we cannot allow people that can afford to pay not to pay and then raise rates to people that we're trying to help. So that, that's, that's the dilemma. It, this, is com this is a complex problem and I, I'm, not, I'm not complaining or I'm not trying to, to rebut anything. I'm just trying to put facts out there that we were collecting from the same customer base 92% prior to the moratorium. Today, 72%. That represents $87 million, most of which are from people that can afford to pay. And I recently said uh, in, in a program that some, some folks took and ran with that we have 60,000 customers that are in the arrears. That's what our billing system tells us. Out of 240,000 customers, we got 60,000. But they're not, see, it's not 60,000 people that can't afford to pay. We think we have 20,000 that we need to give some type of financial assistance. That means there's 40,000 customers that can afford to pay but are not, are not paying. And so I, I just wanna keep that in mind. What, what the goal here is when everybody can pay and the people that need help get help and the people that don't, they pay, everybody pays less. Everybody pays less. And I, I, I just, again, I want to thank we the people of Detroit. They drove a thousand people into, uh, into Wayne Metro's call center right after that interview ended. And I, I wholeheartedly agree. We need to work together to find a permanent funding source. And if not a permanent one, at least state funding to fill the gap until a federal program, LIWOP, can be put in place permanently. We, we know that that's lacking, but I don't think the sustainability of the program should identify it as either being affordable or non-affordable. It's, yes, it won't last if we don't find additional funding, but the program actually works. We got 10,000 people. That's more people in a program than in the last six years total that, that, that I've been here since 2015. Um, and so, it, 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 the, the sheer number of people that are signing up. Uh, it, the, the, the other issue is I, I, I was heavily criticized at one point because I was only doing main media, radio and television. And, and, and now we're, going, we're doing main media and we're going to door to door. And so we know that Wayne Metro has taught us this in the, interview, in the phone interview. People are listening to them. They're a third party validation that 
helps DWSD in driving people into this, this program. Um, and so again, enough said, thank you for uh, the, you know, for all the help that you're giving. And, and we, we don't take anything as criticism. We, we think that you're trying to help us be better. And that's how we're accepting everything that you're saying. We want to make the program the best that it can be in the nation, because I, I'm telling you, people all over the country are calling us about this program. They're asking me to speak in Seattle, all, all, over, the, all over the country about this program. They're trying to emulate it because they know if you can execute a successful program, it will get funded. Politicians will not be able to not fund a successful program. So we, Professor Hammer at Wayne State University, the Water Advocates, DWSD, and others in the community have to go to Lansing and Washington and fight for permanent funding to make the program sustainable. And, and, and we're doing that. We're setting those coalitions up. We're having meetings and trying to uh, figure out how best to attack the problem. And, and Commissioner Kenlott, we'll, we'll be over to the county to get, get, get your support and support from the county uh, in this endeavor also. Thank you. For those residents who are listening, can I give them the information for Wayne Metro really quickly? Please. The website for Wayne Metro is Wayne Metro, that's W-A-Y-N-E-M-E-T-R-O dot org. So that's www.W-A-Y-N-E-M-E-T-R-O dot org. And their direct phone number is 313-386-9727. If you have further questions, you can reach out to We the People of Detroit, we the people of Detroit.com. Their water rights hotline is 844-429-2837. And that's We the People of Detroit's water rights hotline, 844-429-2837. And I'm sorry, I know I've taken up a lot of time. Do you mind if I ask one quick question? And this can be um, resolved later. I know that you're doing some targeted door-to-door -door knocking. Um, could you please, when you get a chance, provide the zip codes in which that's happening? Thank you so much for your time we'll, today. We'll also post it on our website. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. And Thank we look you. forward to that portal for residents. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, is there anyone else in the building, in this room that would like to address the board? All right, is there anyone online? Yes, Mr. Chair, we have six people online. Uh, the first person is Tahira Ahmad. Go ahead, there you go. Good afternoon, thank you for taking my call. And um, I wanna thank everybody for the hard work you're doing. Um, I have a special situation, which the moratorium uh, being lifted would affect me. Uh, I, for my primary home, I am on the lifeline program that helps me, but my, uh, my inherited home is my mom's home, which was affected by the disaster of uh, June 26, 2021. And uh, I'm... Um, it, I'm having so much trouble with that home. I owe like $800 on the bill and the water is shut off from the valve. I, I'm not in the home. We can't use the home because of the disaster. Because I didn't have insurance, FEMA wouldn't help me. So I have the home there without uh, any anybody able, being able to live in the home. Uh, also, um, uh, I have a, a shutoff notice pending on that $800 bill that I owe. I don't know how I, I'm getting a bill when I'm not using the water. No one's there. It hasn't been used for uh, months. Um, also, um, I just want to uh, ask you, uh, due to the fact that I have a unique uh, uh, circumstance and many other residents have that kind of unique circumstance, can you please not uh, shut people off on December 31st. Give us a little more time because I got to get this paperwork together in order to try to, to, to get on some kind of program to keep from getting the water shut off there at the home. So, and, and it's difficult because of the pandemic, because the water, a lot of the papers that I have proving that I own the home through probate uh, has been um, destroyed by water. 
uh, uniquely enough. But uh, so it's hard for me to get around and go to uh, the city county building and get the probate papers and all this. It is a lot of work. And plus, I have MS and I'm, um, you know, I'm disabled and I can't take uh, more money out of my little check I get every month. <laughs> So it's very, very difficult. So I want to know if you guys could please extend that moratorium for people like me and please help us. People like me, if I can get some help, I, I sure would appreciate it. And that's really my uh, comment. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if she could leave her contact information in, in the comments, uh, we will make sure that we put her in contact with the Community Health Corps. Uh, that agency of city government was put together for cases like this. Um, and so we will make sure we put them together so that she can get the help she needs. She, she obviously has described probate and a lot of different issues and with nobody in the house, it, it, you know, and the water not on. So Mr. Director, if she needs help with getting the documents from probate, yeah. she has a case number and whatnot. You can have she, a staff call me and I okay, can we'll get do. a copy of it. She'll, she'll leave her contact information in the comment section of of the call. I, I'm glad to hear Commissioner Kinlock uh, respond. It's tough for attorneys to deal with the probate court these days. There's nobody you can call. <laughs> you can't go there in person. So you play a, an interesting <laughs> trial and error. Did you file it right? Nope. Try again. Did you file it right? Nope. Try again. <laughs> yeah, but Mr. Chair, we're, th this board is here. And we take the call. That's right. Uh, we take the, you know, the conversation at the podium. And sometimes this, this is all this is all they feel like. Other than nine one one, we answer the phone and we we try to help. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there the, who is the next person online, please? Deborah Taylor, it's your turn to speak. Ms. Taylor, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to address the Board of Commissioners and Director Brown and the community concerned about safe, clean, and affordable water. Um, I would just like to say uh, that we have been working diligently on behalf of the citizens really for about 10 years just on this beat. Uh, to to help do our part to make sure that water is a human right and that is actualized. Um, I also want to thank the ombudsman and Mr. Brown and Deborah Poshpies. I hope I got your name right uh, for engaging the ombudsman and for him initiating uh, some communication and clarity. I think one of the things that we came to uh, yesterday in that meeting is that there is a need for clarity around confirmation for the clients who apply, uh, what their feedback is and where they are in, that, in the stage of the process. So looking forward to th that progress that Deborah has uh, promised to follow up on with Wayne Metro uh, so that clients you know, aren't just hanging out there wondering what their status is. Um, the Lifeline program will remove arrearages, and that is probably one of the strongest points of the program. And for that reason alone, I think it, it would be worth people applying who um, have arrearages so that you can have all of your arrearages removed. Um, I think the other thing... Uh, Mr. Brown said the 1.8%, and I just want to sort of tweak that statement to say that applies to a portion of the people, but it's not across the board. So, you know, there's there's the issue of those families and uh, that have multiple uh, persons in the household where the usage would be much higher than the, I think it's 4,500 gallons uh, of water per month. So um, I just want to say that we are uh, working diligently, and I think that uh, the fact that our CEO got on the radio and uh, promoted the program is a testament to trust factor um, 
and uh, their trust in us being advocates and our track record to work with other advocates in the community uh, to look out for the people, to look out for the residents in the city of Detroit. Um, we don't want to see water shut off. So again, we would ask that the moratorium uh, be extended until we can work out all the bugs in the program. And I thank you for your time. Yeah, I, Mr. Thank Chair, you. I, uh, I think Ms. I think Ms. Taylor would agree to this. I mean, there there are. She said the most important, or one of the most important parts of the program was paying off the arrears. Okay, I'd like to just point out that. The second part of that is once we pay off the arrears and we pick up every month the gap between the $18 and what the real bill is, they can't accrue any new arrears. And so not only have we made their arrears go away, but you can't, you pay the $18 and we pay $62 if you have an $80 bill. That means you're not accruing any new arrears. But what I think is the most important part of the program is going in and fixing the plumbing issues, doing the audit and getting the plumbing issues. So there are three pots of money, one to pay off the arrears, one to deal with the gap payment between the $18 and what the real bill is so that you don't accrue new arrears. And then most importantly, the dollars for fixing the plumbing issues to keep customers within the 4,500 and again, I, I've said this, that when you get this money from the federal government or the state, you're required to have a conservation component to your program. You just can't say unlimited amount of water. You gotta put, and we know that families, big families can't stay within that and that we have to work on a policy and procedure for hardship. And that's what, where we're working with Wayne Metro of Detroit to develop that policy. And then we're gonna, post it on our website uh, for the, what I call the exceptions, people outside the norm. So again, th we, we, we wanna thank we the people for working with us uh, as, as well as Hydrate Detroit because we learned so much. And, and again, we're trying to make the program the best program that- I like that. that so, so something new that I'm hearing is about, I'm not sure you all, uh, this new hardship. Um, policy that's being uh, considered. So that's something yeah, that grew we, from yeah, it, right? We, yeah. You know, we do the, we, you have to develop a program for the majority of the people. There always be exceptions. You can't design a program for exceptions. And so we knew that there would be exceptions. Pivot, yeah. And now we're dealing with a written policy on how those exceptions get dealt with. And what I'm hearing the director say is nobody's ever going to be punished for having 10 people no. in the household. And Mr. Chair, you know, the, the biggest problem that we're finding out is people don't want to admit to the number of people that are in the house for whatever reason. May, maybe uh, they're receiving some other state benefits and they just don't want to tell us. And so you have this large amount of consumption. Mm -hmm. They're only reporting three or four people when they're really 10. And that's why the usage is higher. But and, and so, it, you know, this is complex and we, we meet people where they are and we try to work with them through, through these issues. All right. Um, Mr. Chair, our next speaker is Carol Hughes. Ms. Hughes, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, panel and uh, Director Brown. I'm hearing a lot. This is my first time at a meeting. I want to thank uh, Hydrate Detroit for all the hard work that they do, not only Miko and Ms. McCormick, but all of the staff. Um, I'm, I'm wondering why don't they have the money to uh, distribute to the citizens instead of Wayne Metro? I'm wondering why that decision was made, or could they not do it? And um, my other question is, is I live in the aviation subdivision, and recently a reservoir was installed. Now, this reservoir doesn't seem to do anything, but it did alter the aesthetics of the neighborhood. And I'm wondering why millions of dollars was spent on a reservoir to nowhere when we have hundreds of people who are in need of that money that was spent on the reservoir. And um, <clears throat> let me go back to uh, the Hydrate Detroit. Uh, can, can Hydrate Detroit be funded? If they are actually the face of the public and the public seems to be satisfied with them, why 
why aren't they funded? And um, I'll uh, listen to your response and thank you. Mr. 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 Chair, so uh, first, first of all, the dollars that we receive to run these programs are not given directly to the city or directly to the water department. They come through the state, through a community action agency. Again, that's the regulations that we have to work with. We don't get to decide that we can take the dollars given to us by the state and give them to, to anyone. They, they mandate that the program be run by a community action agency. We went out to bid, Wayne Metro won the bid. And so we, we don't have a, a, a lot of say so. Yeah, I'm so proud of the Oakman. You, you call it a reservoir. It's really a green infrastructure uh, project that we put in. When it rains, the water uh, goes into the catch basins, but instead of going into uh, the main pipes to work, the, work its way to the wastewater treatment plant, it's going into that facility. We're mandated to have that facility by the regulators eagle in our permit. We're, we're mandated to spend $50 million a year on those type projects. And um, th they work. They also, uh, this one actually uh, is, is starting mature and it's a great looking uh, medium as, at least as far as I'm concerned. And we're gonna, we're gonna maintain it and make sure that it's, it's working properly. So uh, that's why we put it in. And, and we did extensive community outreach before we went forward with that project. And there was overwhelming support from the people in the aviation district to do it, so. All right, and who is next? Jumana Vasi. Um, Jumana, hello can everyone, you can you hear me? Jumana. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Water Commissioners. I thank you for giving us this opportunity. My name is Jamana Vasi, and I'm proud to represent both the Midwest EJ Network and We the People of Detroit in this conversation. First, I would like to thank Director Brown and Attorney Pospeech for joining Monica Lewis Patrick on stage a few weeks ago. The Health and Environmental Funders Network hosted a regional convening in Detroit, and um, our, our folks were the opening presentation. It was an important opportunity for the audience of funders, healthcare sector, academia, and nonprofits to understand the opportunities and challenges of creating authentic utility community partnerships in service of getting affordable water to all residents. I was heartened by Mr. Brown and Ms. Pospich's recognition of the need to work with community partners, such as we, the people of Detroit, in order to create effective, successful residential water assistance programs. I'd like to underscore the comments made by my colleagues, Attorney Hemphill, Deborah Taylor, and those that might be coming. Um, I did wanna just uh, reflect on the extending the water shutoff piece. We understand the utility has a co critical collections issue, and, but we've also heard today that folks around the, that even with the best of intentions, folks around the room and on the phone are slipping through the cracks and are living without water with children, with uh, relatives that have health issues, and extending the moratorium is the only way to assure that folks um, who shouldn't be cut off are not cut off. And we can hear the difficulty people have in reconnecting. We believe there are respectful ways to ensure that those who can pay will pay. We agree that paying bills for those who can is essential in the water, and we understand that the water department is in a tough spot. We disagree that the potential gains of a water shutoff program are worth the costs, as we heard today from um, Ms. Dion Dunbar, Ms. Tahira Ahmed, and others. Um, the stories we've heard today are just a representative of so many more across the city, and we, the people of Detroit, hears many of them through the hotline via the number that Attorney Humphrey shared earlier. So I did want to say that, and, and then just to underscore the points around communications that are necessary, and ask that there be a plan for uh, a, um, a detailed, comprehensive plan for a deal with hardship cases in households who are um, who need assistance and are using more than 10 CCFs per, I mean, uh, per month. So thank you for your time and appreciate your reflection. Thank you very much. 
Mr. Chair, I just want, I want to thank the board for allowing me to, to be absent from this meeting a couple of weeks ago in order to uh, be able to accept the invitation that was so graciously offered uh, by Jamani and her, and her whole team. Um, I think it was a, a well worth uh, the effort and time we put in to, uh, to, to be there. Um, uh, it was well received. And again, uh, we made some relationships with funders that we intend to join with We the People of Detroit together and go to and try to solve these, you know, these issues. Um, again, as this board knows, most utilities deal with this through uh, putting through tax foreclosure. They put liens on these properties, and when they're sold, it's a very efficient way to collect. We do not do that to residential customers. And so, again, I look forward to having more conversation with we the people of Detroit on how do we solve the problem of collecting from people that can afford to pay. Uh, and I do understand uh, when they say there are people falling through the cracks that she's absolutely uh, correct. And we're hoping that our community advocates help us catch that group of people. But at the same time, how do we deal with the larger dollar loss from customers that can afford to pay. That's that's the dilemma. I haven't heard any recommendations yet on how we can effectively go after that group. All right. Mr. Chair, our next speaker is Tracy Heron. Hello, Tracy. Hello, how how are how are you all? I'm Good sorry. Afternoon. Just as I put some candy in my mouth, <laughs> I would be called on. But I was just hoping that um, as a business owner whose water is not connected, I'm getting drainage charges. And I came down to your office um, maybe a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the receptionist did her best to explain to me everything. But it looks as though the data that she gave back to me it uh, shows how the drainage fee had increased. Uh, it looks like, uh, according to when I took possession of the property, it had increased not according to the rainfall, but according to the value or the assessment of the uh, property. And so I, what I really would like is that if I could actually just sit down with someone out of your office to go over, um, my account, um, other than your receptionist, and that was basically it. Yeah, if you leave your information in the comment section of uh, the webinar, we can get a hold of you. The, the drainage charge has absolutely nothing to do with the assessed value of your property. It only, it, there's, there, it, there's the rate and then there's how much impervious surface and you multiply the rate times the impervious surface. If you're questioning the amount of impervious surface isn't, isn't right, then we certainly can reassess that. But we'll be more than happy to, to have uh, one of our engineers sit down and walk you through how the calculations are done. It has nothing to do with the assessment, assessed value of the property. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Tommy Airy. Mm -hmm. Tommy, can, can you hear us? Unmute your phone, Mr. Airy. There he goes. Hey, hey y'all, I apologize. Um, good afternoon, board and, and Director Brown. I really appreciate you taking the time. I'll be real quick. I've uh, been working with We the People of Detroit the last eight years uh, on these water issues. And, and I just want to reiterate uh, uh, this urge to uh, continue the moratorium on water shutoffs um, as, uh, as Deborah Taylor and, uh, and Jumana and others have, have noted. Uh, 
it feels to me like we just need a lot more time to iron out some of these bugs. Uh, but then the other thing that I wanted to just add uh, to the conversation is, is that uh, uh, it also seems to me that uh, if I remember correctly, that uh, the moratorium was put into place as a public health measure uh, because of the pandemic. And, uh, and despite what, uh, what some of our, our state and national leaders are saying, uh, the pandemic is not over. Uh, in fact, uh, as I look on my, uh, my social media timeline, as, as I'm getting texts the last few days, um, folks are coming down with COVID. Uh, uh, the, the numbers are skyrocketing and not only COVID, but we've got a triple demic uh, with RSV and flu as well. Um, and, and as, as uh, scientists are telling us, um, COVID's going to be around for another five to 10 years. Uh, and who knows what the next variant's going to bring with it. So uh, I just want to urge you to continue the moratorium. We need it not just because it's a compassionate thing, uh, but because it is the, uh, the thing that we need for, for public health. Mr. Chair, I just I just want to I just want to be clear that the state of Michigan uh, removed the moratorium a year ago, and it was the mayor of the city of Detroit, based on public health issues, who decided to continue the mor moratorium for another year. And I can assure you that we're watching uh, the numbers and working with the health department um, uh, very closely. And if the situation warrants it, we will take every measure uh, necessary to make sure that Detroiters are safe. And it's been said here before, but we are continuing the moratorium. I, you just yes. have to call and the moratorium, <laughs> you will be in the moratorium. Yes. Okay. Can't be overstated. All right. Mr. Chair, the next speaker is We the People of Detroit. Is there an individual? Uh, yes, hello, this is Monica Lewis Patrick. Can you hear me? All right, yes. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, first of all, to the Board of Water Commissioners for allowing me to speak and to Mr. Brown and the other representatives as well as our community. But very quickly, just wanted to add uh, two quick points. Uh, Mr. Brown, we are deeply appreciative, uh, I think, in terms of the progress that's been made by Detroit Water and Sewage Department to move in the vein of the recommendations that have really come from community uh, for almost 20 years now that we have to create a rate structure that's affordable, uh, that we definitely needed to be moving toward uh, a rear forgiveness. And then we need a long-term strategy. Uh, but part of why I have to push back on uh, your position that this is a progressive a water affordability plan is because it makes it extremely hard for us to appeal uh, not only to our legislators, uh, but in terms of describing the budgetary needs. When you talk to people about assistance, people understand that that is a temporary fix. Uh, but when you say affordability, then they understand that there has to be a long-term commitment to a funding source. And that's where we find it challenging is because when you look across the nation and you look at research that's been done, most recently the report that came uh, out of the Aspen Nicholas Roundtable, it talked about those differences and the distinctions that we have to make because they are treated differently in terms of funding and in terms of legislative commitments. And so that's just one piece there. And then the second piece uh, in terms of joining those that have applauded what has been successful so far, it has been a very serious challenge for us in terms of dedicating time and resources because we found that the rollout was so clumsily done that there were statements made that groups were involved that had not been involved. And so we've spent a lot of time having to clear up misinformation and really regaining the trust of residents that the program was legitimate. So that has been some of the challenges that we've had to address at We the People of Detroit. And we definitely applaud uh, not only uh, the time that's been dedicated by your staff, but also uh, the general counsel, as well as uh, the excellent commitments that have come out of the ombudsman's office, because we were finding as we were going through this process uh, with your office that the community was concerned because there just seemed to be so many gaps. And of course, we went through several of those yesterday in a meeting uh, to make sure that we're helping the program sure itself up and at least get the relief to these 20,000 residents. Uh, but we know there is so much more that can be done 
we have an all hands on deck approach at We the People of Detroit, uh, but we are deeply concerned about some of the gaps in terms of messaging and where people are just not clear or don't feel as though they may even qualify for the program. And we're having to do extra efforts around the messaging component. So we would just offer those uh, as recommendations to the board uh, and to your office that there is so much more we need to do to ensure that those 20,000 families get this relief. And then much, much more we've got to do to ensure that there is a long-term permanent plan for water affordability in Detroit. Thank, thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, can I can I just I, I, again I want to thank we, we the people of Detroit for their uh, all of their efforts for their recommendations. Uh, you know, I've just you know personally come to realize that it's not necessary for uh, DWSD and we the people of Detroit to be uh, in agreement on every point uh, of this issue, but it is important that we're aligned on the major points, and and I think we are that we have to find permanent funding for this particular program. And, and we uh, appreciate any recommendations on messaging uh, that we received and, and we'll try to make the message uh, more pointed and uh, more direct uh, to be able to, to reach more people. So thank you very much. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, j just also wanted to um, tag on that. Um, th those two groups, um, We the People and Hydrate Detroit have been on the forefront of actually helping the department get the message out there. And um, I'm looking forward to, you know, us continuing to expand those relationships and, um, you know, just making people aware, like you just said a few moments ago, individuals asking us to end the moratorium. The moratorium for all intents and purposes is ended once you contact the, de the department. We can't continue to not have a system that does not encourage people to make, take the initiative to contact the department yeah. and the department along with Hydra Detroit, we the people, you all are out there. We're all out there trying to tell people to contact the department. Um, but uh, the moratorium has to tell you the truth has pretty much always been in place. Once you um, contact the department, relief is there. Yep. All right. Mr. Chair, last and definitely not least is Cecily McClellan. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity uh, to speak. As it has been indicated uh, so many times by Representative We the People of Detroit, our goal is to have a water affordability program that is permanent, that is income based, and is not one that uh, in two years, you know, you kicked off the program and then you have to reapply and your water bill is back up to where it was before. So, I mean, that's one of the crucial elements in water affordability. And as Mr. Brown mentioned, Mr. Colton, um, that program that was presented in 2005 was initially a water affordability program. It was modified uh, by the, uh, the uh, DWSD and human services, and it was made into an assistance program for two years. Um, I really appreciate all the effort that we've got from the staff from DWSD, particularly Deborah Poche, uh, in responding just recently to a communication that we had sent uh, regarding the status of, of the uh, Detroit Lifeline program. But I think in that communication, it, it shares or shows that there is a, a, a gap in between persons that are actually enrolled in the program, receiving the benefit, and those people that had applied. Based on that communication, you're saying like 4,600 people are actually in the program and receiving the benefit but over 13,000 people have applied. So there's a big gap in there. One of the biggest issues we have been experiencing or in our calls is that uh, residents don't know that they are enrolled. Um, so this four week period that um, DWSD is, is uh, suggesting is not necessarily getting to the client. Um, it's indicated that they receive texts or that they receive emails. Uh, I would suggest that they need to receive a written notification that they have been approved for the program. In the interim, also, we have clients that are applying um, that need to be placed on a wait list that are income eligible. They could be receiving SNAP, food stamps, and those persons need to know that they are 
uh, in process for the Lifeline program and that they will not receive or be concerned about a water shutoff. The other concern that we've addressed uh, repeatedly is also those people that exceed the CCFs. And there is a percentage as uh, has been acknowledged by the water department that um, may have 10, 12, and even uh, 14 CCFs. Those persons, if you look at it based on the numbers that you've given, for every two additional CCFs, you'll be paying another 20. Well, if you got 12 or 14 CCFs, you're already up to uh, almost $80 uh, a month. That's nowhere near the 1.8% uh, of you. So we'd like to see a real clear remedy for those people that have large families um, that exceed the uh, recommendation that they can receive assistance through Wayne Metro for plumbing problems, that's not a reality because on their web, they'll tell you plumbing is out of your, your, uh, your time is up. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, I uh, just want to say that uh, it's of the 14,000 who have applied, 8,500 are fully enrolled. Uh, the rest are still covered by the moratorium while they go through the process. I think in the, me in the meeting with We the People yesterday, they raised very good questions about that gap between when you make that call versus you get the approval letter. We're gonna work all that out. Um, you know, this, the collaboration has been key to continued success. So, uh, and the hardship program, we'll work that out too. So, and we'll bring that all that back to the board so that you know uh, how we've, what we propose. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to address the board who hasn't already? No, Mr. Chair. All right, then we will bring public comment to a close. Uh, I thank everybody uh, who did comment for their thoughtfulness uh, and their courtesy and for their civility. Uh, next, we will move to, uh, are there any items from commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Blackman. I would just like to wish all of those in attendance today, all of the employees of the department uh, and all of the residents of the city of Detroit a very happy holiday season, full of health and all that you would wish for for the holidays. Uh, any other items from commissioners? <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Blackman. Then um, we have two items of communication. 9A and B, um, is there a motion to receive and file? Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I mean, Mr. Chair, we do want to uh, receive and file Hydrate Detroit's communication that they sent in an email. I beg your pardon? An email, Hydrate Detroit. Hydrate Detroit has All right, let's add uh, an email from Hydrate Detroit. Is there a motion uh, as amended? Mr. Chair, I move that we receive and file the correspondence as indicated as amended. Right. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any question or comment? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those, those opposed, and that is adopted. We now move on to our consent agenda. The consent agenda consists of items A through E. These are matters that were considered by the finance department and they come to us uh, where, where the finance department considered them uh, in detail. They come to us with department committee, the, that committee's recommendation. Um, is there any item on the consent agenda that any commissioner would like to be removed and considered separately? Commissioner Kinlock. Yes, item 22-1000, uh, I'd like that to be considered separately. Which, it, it, uh, that's the McKinstry. It is. So that's it's that, the, that's it's, going to be considered separately. Yeah. Uh, we're we're looking at items A through E. That that's going to oh, come I up on it. new yes, business. Yes, I saw it. New business. Yeah. Thank Mr. you, Chair. Uh, Commissioner Black. Move approval of the consent agenda as presented as amended. Or it's moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed. All right, that is adopted. So we now move to item 12, new business, 
uh, item 12A220992. Uh, is there a motion? Mr. Chair. Uh, I move that the Board of Water Commissioners for the City of Detroit Water and Sewerage Department recommend adoption of an amendment to the DWSD investment policy and also, author also authorizes the director to take such other action as may be necessary to accomplish the intent of this vote. Right. Ma Madam Chair, I'm Commissioner Forte. Can you read the resolution that's included with that motion? Ah. Page 45. Thank you. Really? We we, we 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 did it in we, we considered it in committee. I mean, I, I'm just curious, why does this resolution have to be read out? Because it's part of the motion. Well, lots of resolutions are part of the motions. Um no, not the right whereas those are part that's part of the motion. This is the investment policy financing. Okay, what page? Oh, read 45. Page 45. Yeah, so whereas the Detroit Water and Sewage Department is seeking approval to amend the investment policy, whereas these changes are based on recommendations by PFM, DWSD's investment consultant, and now therefore it be resolved that the board, the Detroit Board of Water Commissioners approves the attached recommendations from PFM to amend the investment policy amended and be it finally resolved that the director and the chief financial officer officer are authorized to take uh, such other action as may be necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution. And is there support? Support, any discussion? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. and that is adopted. Next, we go to new business item B, 220993, commissioners. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Coleman. Board of Water Commissioners for the City for the City of Detroit Water and Sewer Department approves an amendment to reclassify the retail revenues in the Water Operation Fund for fiscal year 2023 and further authorize directors to and the Chief Financial Officer to take such other actions as may be necessary to accomplish the intent of this vote. Second. And Commissioner, I need you to read the resolution as well. Page 49. Page 49. Page 49. Mr. Uh, Commissioner Coleman, would you mind reading the resolution? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up. Uh, um, okay. Here. Page 50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Upon recommendations from um, Super Ruman, Chief Financial Officer, the Board of Water Commissioners for the City of Detroit Water and Sewer Department, approves amendment to re reclassify the revenues in the Water Operating Fund for fiscal year 2023. Further authorized director and chief financial officer to take such other actions as may be necessary to accomplish the intent of this vote. Moved and supported. Any discussion? You have to read the whereas. You have to read the whereas. whereas Great Lakes Water Authority, GWLA, GWLA, assumed the operations of the regional water and sewer system and the Detroit Water Sewer Department's WD, WD, DWSD continue operations of the retail water and sewer system on January 1, 2016, and pursuant to lease agreements between GLWA and the City of Detroit dated June 12, 2015, whereas Detroit Water and Sewer Department is seeking approval to reclassify the water retail revenues by increasing the water commodity revenue to decrease service charges and private fire line revenues, whereas the water com commodity revenue will increase from 664, 000, $64,171,000 $47 to $98,115,900 or increase to $33,944,000 and, and, and 543, whereas the private fire line revenue will decrease from $4,771,000, $4,700,000, excuse me. My, my, I have hearing aids and my phone rings in my ear when I'm uh, I have those too. <laughs> Sorry about that. The private fire lines revenue will decrease from four million seven hundred seventy one eight hundred dollars to two million sixty eight thousand four hundred dollars, or a decrease of two million seven hundred and three and four hundred dollars. Next page. Next page. Uh, whereas. Oh shit! It's more. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
whereas the, the changes are based on recommendations made by Syntec DWSD rate study consultant <clears throat> and have a dollar net impact on retail revenue and revenue requirements for fiscal year 2023. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the, the Detroit Bar Board of Water Commissioners approves the attached amended budget for fiscal year 2023 and its, its fin finale resolves that the director and the chief financial officer are authorized to take such other actions as be necessary to accomplish the intent of this vote. It's been moved and supported. Comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? And that is adopted. Next item C, uh, 220986. Commissioners. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Forte. That the Board of Water Commissioners for the City of Detroit Water and Sewage Department authorizes the director to approve amendment number nine to DWSD, contract number 6001278 uh, L.S. Um, L. Um, 1773 to add $500,000 in funding for a total amended contract not to exceed amount of $2,400,000 for legal services related to all drainage charge matters and Michigan Warehousing Group versus City of Detroit with Miller Can Canfield, Paddock and Stone. Is that, is that, it's supported. Any discussion? Um, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Excuse me, that is adopted. Item D, 220988. Uh, commissioners. Mr. Chair. Yes. I move to the Board of Water Commissioners for the City of Detroit Water and Sewage Department authorizes the director to approve amendment two to DWSD contract number 06600-3769 LS1906 with Bush Saford PLLC to add $500,000 for a new total amended amount of $1,050,000 for continued legal services for representation in litigation related to summer 2021 rain events. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Excuse me. Those opposed? Aye. And that is adopted. Commissioner Kinlock, do you want to make a motion? Uh, yes. Yes, Mr. Chair. Or we can have, we can have somebody else. Okay, make I, motion. I can make the motion. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chair, <laughs> upon recommendation of the director, and I move that the Board of Water Commissioners for the Detroit Water and Sewage Department authorize the sale of 235 South McKinstry, Detroit, Michigan, uh, 48229 to newer, newer Horizons LLC for the price of $1.4 million and also authorize the director to take such other action that may be necessary to accomplish the intent of the vote. Um, be a further resolved that a copy of the memorandum regarding GLIWA property sales be uh, uh, attached uh, to, this, uh, to this action. Is there support? Or it's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Under discussion, uh, as you can recall, in the committee meeting, we had some some real serious discuss uh, conversations regarding the sale, um, and it was made more clear um, to me as it relates to our role when it comes to disposing of property um, and our sort of um, uh, guidance uh, of sort that is um that has come from you know the bifurcation and the agreement with Lewa. And so I, I so we have very limited um ability um to dictate um the trans uh selling of real estate, which was is something that we you know wanted to go on the record of saying that we disagree with. Um but uh this 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 contract as we were advised by our council is pretty ironclad um and it will result in even more problems um, if we had um, taken uh, counteraction based upon what's already been laid out in this agreement. Okay, uh, Mr. Brown. I want to state okay. that on the record. 
Yeah, and um, <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity. So prior to 2011, DWSD was leasing this property. And uh, sometime around 2011, management bought to this board, at least two members of this current board were on the board and they were convinced that they should buy the building. So the building was purchased. I've been over to the building uh, because I had to vote on this with the Great Lakes Water Authority. I videotaped the building. It's, it's almost four blocks long. It's only one story high and it has a glass roof, windows that are no longer there. The building is filled with water. Um, I, I make the assumption that after the bifurcation in 2016, all the equipment was moved out and probably moved over to Hubert to the facility that I, that I maintain. And so the building was empty and has not been kept in uh, good repair. Um, it would take approximately $3.5 million to put a new roof on the building. And uh, the decision was made by Glee was, since it's empty, they don't have a use for it, that they would put it out to bid. The highest bid that they got was 1.4. And it was from a company in Macomb County, I think it's identified as New Horizon, but that is a construction company that wants to move millions of dollars worth of construction equipment into the building because they want to take advantage of bidding on contracts in Detroit, including working on the new Gordy House Bridge, which this property is very close to. So for the first time in, in, in a long time, you now have companies not moving out of Detroit into the suburbs. You have suburban construction firms wanting to move in take over and pay taxes on a building that is empty. And so uh, the Gleewell board decided that the best thing to do was to put it up, uh, to allow it to be sold uh, at the bid price that they received. I, quite frankly, I was shocked they got 1.4. I was trying to figure out how, you know, I, if you sold it to a, a, a private investor and invested 3.5 for a new roof, you might be able to make 30% off your investment. At least that's my, was my thinking when I'm looking at this building, but I, I don't know that I'd want to take that chance, but this company has, has seen it as an opportunity to move back in Detroit, get their equipment uh, closer to the jobs in the city of Detroit, hire Detroiters uh, uh, for that facility. And so uh, it's my intent if this board approves it and the Great Lakes Water Authority approves it, I also intend to take it to the Detroit City Council. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to go for their approval, but it's my intent to, to uh, property sell, to do it anyway. I and also want to say that uh, if pictures, I think that would have been helpful because while we were sitting here, the lawyer who sat in for Ms. Postries, uh, I guess, um, 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 oh, yeah. pardon me. Attorney Green. Yeah, we, yes, we, we, yes, we so she had the pictures, um, Randall um, Brown sent pictures over and looking at it, that was very, it was very interesting. Yeah, the building's in horrible shape. It has a glass window roof that the glass panes have have been broken. Water has filled the basement, almost two levels of the building with water. Um, and so, yeah. I, I don't think anyone questions the wisdom of this sale. Um, but what uh, part of the discussion two weeks ago was the realization that there's a provision in the lease that gives LIWA, LIWA the unilateral right to sell our property um, now, with the board's approval, with the board's approval, and um, and apparently, this vote is purely perfunctory. We we have no real discretion. I know why they need this vote because they won't get title insurance without it. Because we are the legal owners. Um, yeah. But let let me raise a hypothetical. Um, this lease is going to end in 40 years. There are some people at this table that'll be here. <laughs> I doubt that I'm one of them. <laughs> but we're, we are still the legal owners of these assets. And my hypothetical is, let's say Galiwa decided it's time to replace the Connor Creek pumping stations. And they want to sell that property. 
they're going to develop new pumping capabilities somewhere else or on the property. Um, do I understand it correct that they get all of the proceeds of that sale? We, we're entitled to 40% of the proceeds. We're 40% of the... But the more important question is, who owns the new pumping stations? Well, Great Lakes Water Authority. Yeah. It is a legal entity unto itself. They, they have ownership rights. So, you know, we're in a situation where um, they can unilaterally sell our property that would revert back to us at the end of the lease and take the proceeds and convert our property into their property. Um, which means, I, I don't know what it means. If the matter were to go to an arbitrator, the arbitrator would have to decide whether the sale of the Connor Creek pump station mm -hmm. was the right thing to do. If it was no longer useful, it may be that it is sold. And well, it would be up to the arbitrator to determine the legitimacy of that sale. Yeah, but the Detroit but the lease says what it says. and. Yeah. The Detroit board members on Gleewood's board would have to be asleep at the switch to, uh, to I allow that. that. To Although I also vote. understand this is not an extraordinary majority decision either. Um, the Detroit members could, could be outvoted. I, I, I think for a Connor Creek pump station, <laughs> okay, we'd get the support of the board to um, I, I, what's in Detroit's best interest. And then this board would have to approve it. And Well, as I understand it, Again, this resolution is um, really doesn't represent us exercising any discretion. Um, well, I raise it as a concern. Well, because, other than that, you could force it to arbitration if you voted no. And, yeah, we could vote it to arbitration, but that is what the lease says, isn't it? I mean, yes. we'd lose. Well... I, I don't know that calling it a loss is necessarily it's it, it, the case. Yeah. It may be it is in the best interest. Of, we have a fiduciary duty to the customers. Yeah. It may be in the best interest of the customer base yeah. to have a There's no dump doubt. this asset and have a better functioning. There is no station. doubt that we're going to have to replace old facilities. Yes. And in doing that, though, we're trading Detroit assets for what will no longer be Detroit assets. That's the grand bargain. So the, so the new construct, uh, the new facility would be strictly Gleewas? That's correct, of which we have 40% of the assets. Well, are we getting 40% of this 1.4 million? No. Somebody was not representing us at that table. <laughs> right. it, doesn't, oh. it doesn't get divvied out yeah, to, the, the to the owners. That, it, the proceeds it, stay with the entity you're, you're, of you're, which we are 40% members. You're bringing a vacant building back online to pay yeah. taxes yeah. No, to the city of Detroit. Don't question the wisdom of this deal. I, I, it's the next one and the next one and the next one. Commissioner Forte. Yeah, I mean, I, I do understand, I think, precisely what Chairman Einhauser is referring to. It's the possibility that ultimately, um, and, and theoretically, because it's really theoretically and hypothetically, that all the assets were sold under the lease, mm -hmm. which, when I recall, our deal was exactly my concern, that all assets could be sold. And while we would benefit at the GLEWA level in our 40% share, at the end of 40 years, DWSD and the city of Detroit would not have assets. Or lease money. Or lease or cash. Or cash. Um, well, the, the lease. But they'd have a position, in. don't get me wrong, in the assets of Lewa, but that's not the same. The, the lease will never end. The, there will always be bond debt out there. It is I, the same. I understand that. And and but our negotiating ability forty years from now, if we don't own the assets, is mm -hmm. going to be substantially different. Oh, and 
It's not going to be my problem. <laughs> but I, we have to look out for <laughs> But we do. We have a fiduciary duty. And um, all right, I. Uh, it says what it says. And um, I, I, I'm hearing um, the director say, as, as a board member of Bliwa, um, that the exercise of this provision of the lease is going to be monitored very, very carefully. Yes. And more than that, I guess we cannot say. Any other comments or questions? Yeah. All right. Uh, on this motion, then, uh, if, if I hear no more discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. And we have two two opposed. All right. It was uh, someone from the audience? Oh, from the Miko. <laughs> one one I, commissioner. You and know our business, vote. but you don't have a vote here. <laughs> <laughs> let's make the let's make the record clear. Here yeah. On this, please. Yeah. Let's let's have a roll call. Chairman Einhauser. Yes. Vice Chair Blackman. No. Commissioner Kenlock. Yes. Commissioner Coleman. Yes. Commissioner Porte? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? No. I could count four to three. Um, yeah, I can. Okay. Four to the, two, so the four to two. two. Four to two, two. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I can. Uh, Jane, did you vote no? She did. Yeah. Yeah. Just a point of clarity. Mm -hmm. Can I vote? The board members not present may not register a vote. That's, oh, okay. That's a point. That's a point. You All right. That, don't you? <laughs> so this it this this motion is adopted um, <laughs> four to one. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's next? And uh, look, I know that um, the discussion here is going to be noted and taken up taken appropriately under advisement. Then we move to we move to item F. Uh, item 221008, commissioners. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Water Commissioners for the City of Detroit Water and Sewerage Department approves the recommendation of General Counsel in matter of Campbell versus City of Detroit, case number 21-004892-NO and authorizes the General Counsel to take such other action as may be necessary to accomplish the intent of the vote. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion uh, of this matter? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? And that is adopted. Then next, can we move to the director's report? Move Mr. to receive and file. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, Joe. I'm, I'm going to be, oh, no. I'm going to be, I'm a, I'm a, I have a script here and I'm going to be very, I'm going to stick to the script. I, I, before I get to the script, though, I just want to say that I'm, I am going to be on, I was invited to be on uh, 9, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Uh, Anthony Adams has in, invited me to, uh, to spend time on the show promoting, or I, I'm answering questions about the uh, Lifeline uh, program. So if you're, if you're interested in listening in, um, it'll be nine o'clock. Uh, tomorrow morning, AM nine ten. Nine ten AM radio. Okay, as we end two thousand twenty two, I want to thank the Board of Water Commissioners for its leadership and unwavering support of our new water affordability program, the Lifeline Plan. I also uh, want to thank the Detroit Water and Sewer Department (DWSD) executive team and staff for implementing the program that is already positively impacting more than 8,500 households and for your hard work on many other services and programs this year, including the transition of the upgrade of the Inquesta billing uh, system led by Dan Rainey. Um, that, that was years in the making and um, we wouldn't be able to do the lifeline plan had we not upgraded the Inquesta billing system. So I, I just, there are many other projects that have been completed and I'm going to put a, a list together in January of all the accomplishments of all the departments and uh, and see how much of it I can get into the mayor's uh, state of the city address uh, in March. 
Uh, in early 2023, we'll, we will revise this monthly report to provide more details that the commissioners have requested on our service delivery impacts, programs, and communication, outreach, and other work. Have a, ha have a happy and safe uh, holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Brown? Then next, let's move to comments by commissioners. Any commissioners have any comments to make? Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. We made ours earlier. I think it's out of place. <laughs> <laughs> any other commissioner comments? Uh, yeah. Commission uh, comments by the chair. I just want to echo what um, Gary said. This, this last year has been the most exciting year about being on this board. Um, yeah. And going back to the Blue Ribbon Committee, um, the uh, affordability has always been on our mind. And it's, we take no joy when people come before us with genuine heartbreaking stories about uh, how the rates are affecting them. Um, we also sometimes have to listen to some of the things that people say in public with a grain of salt. A former neighbor of mine in Palmer Woods two years, uh, last year, went on the radio and said how um, mothers lost their children because the water was shut off. Now, that's patently false. Um, or, or, or because um, people lost their houses. And then I told her, you should do your homework. We don't foreclose on houses. That said, there's no question that for a lot of families, paying the water bill is a challenge. And I, I'm just so thrilled to have been part of this um, with all of you. It's, it's a good year. It's a very good year. Um, and with that, I join uh, Commissioner Kinlock and others wishing everybody the joy of the season, whatever holiday you celebrate it. I celebrate or however you celebrate it. Have a very, very good holiday. Stay safe. Supposed to get everybody, Feliz Navidad to everybody. Thank you. Feliz Navidad. If you're on the road on Friday, be careful. <laughs> All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Adjourn, Mr. Chair. Yes. Before we end adjourn, we need to establish a retreat date today. Oh. I thought we had so the last date I put out was January 23rd. I just need to see if that's good for everyone. Is the 23rd of January of, of February? January, January 23rd, 2023. Is January 23rd a good date for the it, retreat? If we could just get a tentative uh, yes, then we can check with the All consultant right. that we're working with and hopefully uh, we can hold fast to that date, but Tentatively, that's the date. Hold it. Tentatively. So I do have something I need to move if we're going to have it on that date, but I need to know as soon as possible. We, we, we'll go, we'll get with you tomorrow. We will call, call our consultant. And there's been some discussion about maybe moving it to February, but. So so will it move? Would it be morning, afternoon, or entire day? It, it, it'll be, well, I'm going to try to have the, the board in the morning, the first couple of hours and. And you know, understand the retreat. I mean, we we understand that the issues that have been raised with me will take like a three day workshop with the board, just the board, not. But what I'm asking the board to be prepared to tell us is what are your goals, what are your intentions for this department next year, and then I'm going to work with the staff and a consultant to try to uh, to make that happen. Um, and so. We can't resolve all of the issues that the board has raised in a two hour workshop or retreat. And so I intend to find some dates, not three days consecutively, but we'll do three days and then have some time in between to be able to work on before the next one. But the board is requesting a three day workshop to work on communication issues and others. And, and that's separate than the retreat. The retreat is just tell us what your, your goals for this organization is going forward in the next year so that when I set the goals for my staff, I'm aligned with the board. Um, and not to pile on, but let's also put on our to-do list um, a community meeting in the first quarter of 
2023. Oh, we, we can make that happen. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Anything else to come before the board? All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Those a motion to adjourn, please. Yeah. I think we we had one, didn't we? Yeah. Next Four. meeting. Sure. Yes, okay. it's Next been meeting. moved. It's Eight. been seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.